When is actually a good time to leave your job if you are choosing to start a business and create that financial freedom that you crave? Hey, ladies, I'm back, and today is a business focus podcast. Um, and I get a lot of questions from people asking me about personal and professional questions. Um, and oftentimes in our mastery business program, we attract um, business owners, established business owners. They might be the first few years of their business. Um, I, we actually do have businesses that have been in business for 10 plus years. Really, it's about the sustainability piece. And I get this question a lot, and so I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to break it down as to not so much a strategy, um, but kind of the why behind we ask these questions and what really needs to happen in order to create what you want in your life. So the question is, how do I create a sustainable business that will allow me to quit my corporate job without the stress of financials? How do I get organized with my time and energy to run a new business, work full time, and look after my two young children who are four and one? Okay, so a complex question, but first and foremost, I want you to know that it's possible. 100% this is possible. It is. I'm living proof that it's possible. I used to work a corporate job. I started a business. I had three children. My youngest was a year old. Um, I was going through stage four cancer. It is 100% possible. So um, when I actually had my diagnosis, I already quit my job. I was literally, oh gosh, I was like four months in around of officially quitting my corporate job, like signing the papers and getting rid of that safety net when I was diagnosed with cancer. So the reason why I'm telling you this, I was growing my business while I was still working, but when you officially take that leap. So, okay. How do I create a sustainable business? So first of all, I want you to define what sustainability is. What does that mean to you? Because oftentimes when we are, when we're saying sustainable, what does that mean? It usually means time freedom. It usually means, um, you know, financial freedom, but like sustainability is typically like you have more time and energy, right? Like you can work the amount of hours that you want to work. And yes, there are seasons in your business and your life where you have to put in more energy and effort. So it's, you know, I do feel online, um, there's a little bit of, you know, bullshit that you can only work. It, it, I think when Tim Ferriss created his book, The Four Hour Work Week, yeah, great. That's a great goal to get to. But when you're in startup, like the four hour work week is physically impossible. Um, you have to put a lot more energy and effort. And if you actually do want the four hour work week, you have to outsource like a fucking boss. So you have to be super focused on the highest leverage action. So number one, define what sustainability is for you, not the person next to you. So do that right now, what sustainability would look like. Um, that will allow you to quit your corporate job. So without the stress of the financials. So what I often see is when people are in corporate and they have a desire to start their business, you have to one, have a business. You have to have an idea in Instead of I'm in corporate and I think I may want to start a business, you have to really give yourself permission to start that business. Um, you have to commit because what I see is the golden handcuffs. You're in corporate, you're making good money. Um, well, if you are making good money in corporate and that money will always pull you back into safety. So the stress of the financials, I'm just going to be radically honest here. It doesn't matter if you have a dollar in the bank or a million dollars in the bank, you can still be stressed about money. So people stress about money, but what they actually are stressing about is the fear of uncertainty. 
So it's not necessarily the actual money stress. If you can pay your bills and you have a savings account and your credit cards are being paid off every month and you're not racking up debt, the money stress is typically around fear of uncertainty. And what I see is when people are going from corporate to business ownership, a lot of the money stress is the fact that they are responsible for their paycheck now and they don't know how they're going to create a paycheck. Um, And when you're in corporate, there's expectation that somebody else is paying you. So you have that internal pressure off yourself. So a lot of the financial stress is actually just regular stress. So if you are choosing to create your financial, or sorry, leave your corporate job within the for the next one to three years, my suggestion is to con- is to contact and um, talk to your financial team. So if you have a bookkeeper, if you have an accountant, if you have a financial planner, financial advisor, um, look at your budget. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the word budget, but like look at your spending, open up your debits, open up your credit cards, look at your every single like line by line. Like this is the shit that nobody wants to do. But if you're unwilling, if you're willing to do the emotionally uncomfortable work, you will see results. So um, line by line for you and everybody else in the house that is a contributor financially, you got to have those emotionally uncomfortable conversations and you have to look at it and be like, holy shit, look how much money we're spending on XYZ. So you're starting to realign your financial investments, right? Every dollar counts. So you're starting to realign your money with what is pri- is priority. So priorities should be, of course, paying your bills, feeding your family, feeding yourself. And for me, a priority, even when I didn't, quote unquote, have money, was my health. So I was willing to invest money in my health over clothes, in my health over new car, in my health over... Um, vacations. And it doesn't mean that you can't go on a vacation. It just means maybe you're going to do more of a staycation or maybe you are, you know, um, I don't know, you're just not going on vacation and just keep swiping the credit card and not paying attention to it. So it's not that you have to be restrictive anywhere, but you're really starting to look at your money. Because the truth is, if you don't look at your money when you have a corporate job, these um, habits, these money habits, and these behaviors are re- are going to follow you into business ownership. And if you don't develop that habit and identity now, it's just going to catch up with you later. So start doing that now because you're going to be doing that when you have a business as well. Um, okay, so now we know what sustainability is for you. We know we've talked about what you're going to do with your finances. Um And then you can also make a plan for the future. So a lot of my clients, some are in mastery, some transition to mastery business. Who left their corporate job? Not everybody leaves their corporate job. Some people just, you know, get a promotion. They change their role. um, But definitely they change how they feel and treat themselves in their life. And they don't want to leave corporate anymore. So those people... There are the people who do leave corporate. Some of them will take a leave of absence. So you take like a year leave of absence. Um, If you can ask for that. And that also gives you the time and the space as well to do that. And so sometimes that helps with financial stress. Um, And sometimes people just have, they have stocks, they have investments. You might want to take some of that out early. So again, talking to your financial planner, financial advisor, Um, you can start to save money. So you have at least six months of living expenses in the bank if you want. Um, but I don't know, I'm a risk taker. So if, and I just have to do scary shit all the time. Um, oh, what else I was going to say is if you do, I say I'm a risk taker because I just do things that is not really, uh, expert advice. So I'm trying to give you the conservative advice here, but Um, If you are a risk taker like me, then you will just be like, fuck it, let's go for it. And then scare the crap out of yourself and do emotionally uncomfortable things. Another thing is if you are getting loans, if you're getting loans, if you're remortgaging your house, if you're trying to refinance, do all of that while you have a corporate job before you're a business owner, because the government doesn't fucking love business owners. And... 
uh, especially in Canada. So corporate, yeah. So anything that you can do, if you can actually create more capacity for credit, um, do that. If you can get extension on your credit cards, if you have a healthy relationship with your credit, the reason why I mean that I say this is because you have more space, right? So when you take that leap, if something does happen, this is something I wish I did when, um, when I left because, uh, when I got sick, I did not have a lot of credit available to me and I didn't have that kind of like emergency fund cushiony stuff. So you don't need to use it, but it's nice to know that it's there when you're getting ready to leave corporate. Um, how do you get organized your time and your energy to run a new business? Okay. So let's talk about energy. So we have our mental energy, which is to me, mental energy is, emotional intelligence, emotional wellness, emotional health. Um, Everyone's going to call it something different, right? So the fact that mentally I feel on my game, you have your physical health. So that's your physical body. And that includes movement and nutrition. Um, And then you have, so you have your mental, you have remote, excuse me, your physical Uh, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual energy. Spiritual energy is your definition of spirituality. You can have religious beliefs. You can follow religion. uh, You can have energetic beliefs. You can have spiritual beliefs. That is 100% up to you. That is totally your journey. Um, In our community, we have a lot of different belief systems, and I'm like, all the power to you, whatever you want to believe. Um, For me, mine changes a lot. Um, Over the years, it has changed because I came up from a religious background, and that was not aligned for me personally. So I talk a lot about the soul. I talk a lot about energy and having a relationship with something bigger than yourself, uh, will you can co-create energy with that. Um, and all of these things need to be cultivated all the time. Like this is your daily habits. This is how you live your daily life. This is how you identify as somebody. Uh, like it's really about identity. What I personally find is people are so disconnected from themselves, their emotional health, physical, mental, um, and spiritual that when they become a business owner, it's like, a huge learning curve for them because they didn't realize they needed this. So it doesn't matter if you are in corporate or if you work from home or if you are a house manager, um, AKA you are the manager of the household and the little people that live in it, the children that live in it, um, or you are self-employed, you are a human being and you should always, always at the core be cultivating more energy in your life. So how do you do that? There's 1 million ways to do that. But I always say, start with your micro habits. A micro habit is something that you're doing for 10 minutes a day. And then you practice habit stacking. So if you are not, like you got to do the basics first. And it's so unsexy. If you're not drinking water every day, number one. If you're not moving every day, that's number two. If you are not eating on a regular basis um, every day, And getting out of that diet culture mentality. So you're really, I mean, three meals a day. I eat five meals a day. They're smaller meals um, every two to three hours. And I just, you know, I pre-cook a whole bunch of stuff. It's in the fridge. I make smaller portions. Like you gotta, you have to start with the basics. But we're so obsessed with goals and weight and everything else that it just becomes incredibly toxic and perfection-y. So Start there, create that momentum. It's going to feel unsexy. If you're willing to do the unsexy, emotionally uncomfortable work, you'll get there. Now, time. Time is the same thing. So time is, um, you have to remember, do do you have actual time debt? Do you have, uh, are you time wealthy? And people say they want time freedom, but they don't invest 
time in alignment with their priorities. So pay attention, like actually physically do a time log of your day from the time you open your eyes to the time you go to bed and look at what you're prioritizing in your life. Mentally, you'll tell yourself you you are prioritizing other things. And then you're actually physically going to look at where you're investing your time and you're going to be like, oh, that's not aligned. So if something's important to you, you will invest in it. If it's not, you'll make an excuse. Um, Okay. So we talked about sustainable businesses. We talked about our sustainable business, talk about corporate and finances, time and energy. Um, So here's my last words of advice. You can't do this alone. Um, I don't know where people get that belief. I don't know why they think they have to muster all of the energy and they need to be an expert at everything. The smartest, most intelligent people I know and look up to are the ones that outwardly say, I know nothing about this topic, which is why I hired this person. And if you have been trying to solve a problem and you're putting out a lot of energy with little ROI, little return on your investment, your time and energy, it is time to hire somebody who can help you. And if you don't know where to go, you find the person who has already accomplished what you want to accomplish. And if you know them personally, you say, I really need you in my life. Let's make it happen. I need you to hold me accountable. I need you to show me the way. Um, And of course, if you are interested in, um, if you're really, you're like, Heather did that, I want to do that too, um, then check out all the free resources I have. Of course, you're listening to the podcast. Go buy my book, Dying to Be a Good Mother. You can listen to it on Audibles as well. Um, And if you are a business owner and you want to grow your business and shrink your to-do list, then go to Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N dot com forward slash own it, O-W-N-I-T. And that is a mini course that we created for you on how to attract more ideal clients, how to have those um, sales conversations, how to do more in your business or kind of prioritize what's important for you. We have the business energetic time management module there um, and so many more goodies as well. And if you're ready for the next level and you're ready to dive into coaching, go to heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me. If you are in corporate and you want to start a business, I know I already said that was, this was my last piece, but the last, last, last thing I'm going to say to you is who benefits from you not pursuing your business? Who benefits from you not pursuing your business? Who benefits from you not taking action on your dreams? Who benefits? And just imagine whatever your business is, imagine your ideal client, your ideal customer is out there and they're pleading. They're pleading for you to show up. They're literally praying like, dear God, send me a sign, send me a person And you, you may be the only person that can support them. And I, if that doesn't get you going, I want you to ask yourself beyond the fear, beyond the worry, beyond the overwhelm, beyond the doubt, what is it that you truly crave? And are you willing to just get a little bit, just a little bit emotionally uncomfortable today? Because if you are, you will see over time with consistency how easy it is for you to change your life. There it is. You just listened to the Emotionally Uncomfortable podcast. If you want to take this conversation to the next level, head on over to our private Facebook group community, Heather chauvin.com forward slash Facebook. My last name is spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-N. That's heatherchauvin.com forward slash Facebook. Or you can text the word Facebook to 313-710-5199. 
That's 313-710-5199. It's a U.S. phone number and text message rates will apply. Also, if you are a huge fan of this show, please rate and review it on iTunes. Every review helps another woman like you take back control of how she wants to feel and become emotionally uncomfortable. I truly believe the better we feel, the more alive we become, this is how we are going to change the world. And if you've been watching me for a while, if you've been on the fence and you're curious, how can Heather help me? Head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me to check out my mastery and mastery business coaching programs. That's heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me. 